When people think of Nazis, the image that most likely comes to mind is a scary looking German man. But the Nazi regimen, also known as the Third Reich, had its share of complicit women, and some would go on to commit some of the most unthinkable acts in concentration camps. The most evil of the bunch was Imre Gresse, a camp guard better known as the Hyena of Auschwitz or the Beautiful Beast. The outright violence and brutality was so bad it had even been recognised by her senior male Nazi colleagues. Her depravity was so inconceivable it's actually hard to fathom every accusation against her. The deranged young German woman was just 22 years old when she was hanged for her war crimes after being found guilty for torturing and murdering prisoners and holds the record as the youngest woman in history to die under British law. So without any further ado, let's get into the deranged story of the beautiful beast. Nineteen thirty three was the year that Adolf Hitler and the Nazis came to power in Germany, and that very same year, ten year old Imre Gresse became fascinated by the Nazi agenda. Her father was given no choice but to allow this to go on, as Nazi education was mandated in all elementary schools across Germany. Imre was one of five children, and at the age of thirteen, her mother tragically killed herself after discovering her father was having an affair. It was said by one of her sisters that she was also bullied in school, resulting in her eventually dropping out of education. Already off to a bad start, Imra's Nazi corruption grew to the point that at age 14, she left home to find her way in the world after her relationship with her father grew sour from their oppressive views on Nazism. During this time she was job to job and in 1939 she decided to study at an SS hospital. This was a place that was occupied by high ranking Nazis most of the time. She trained under Karl Gebhardt, the most famous orthopaedic surgeon in Europe and one of the original Nazi party members who had marched alongside Hitler in World War I. It was here where she was first exposed to torturous medical experimentation on living humans. Imra worked as an assistant nurse during her stint at the Nazi hospital, but apparently didn't do well enough to become a full-fledged nurse. Karl told her that she could probably use her talents elsewhere and suggested she contact one of his friends at a local concentration camp. She was just 17 years old when Karl's suggestion would deeply impact many lives in the coming months and years. She ended up volunteering as a guard at the Ravensbrück concentration camp, one exclusively for female prisoners. As she was just 17, they told her to return back once she had turned 18, and in 1942, that is exactly what she done. She endured three weeks of gruelling training at the Ravensbrück to harden her and completely brainwash her. An interesting fact is that in her first days, she actually apologised to a camp inmate when she stepped in front of her and it took four days for her co-worker, as he would say, to cure Imra of her politeness and humanity. It typically took over a month to train as an SS guard to their fullest immoral potential of brutality, but Imra was trained in only three weeks. She began violently beating inmates at Ravensbrück as this was part of her training. This would be nothing compared on what she went on to do. At the young age of 19, Imra Gresse was ready to enter the next camp in her career of brutality and crime and received orders transferring her to Auschwitz-Birkenau near Krakow, Poland in March of 1943. Imra arrived at Auschwitz-Birkenau and was assigned to the women's camp where the extensive gassing and cremation of Jews and other victims occurred. She also had other unmurderous duties there, including commanding gardening squads, being the telephone operator and even censoring the mail. And we will soon find out which part of her job role she enjoyed more. 
Just 14 months later, in May 1944, she was promoted to Chief Overseer, which was the second highest rank a guard could have. Another chilling fact was that she was responsible for over 30,000 prisoners of the camp, which in itself is a terrifying thought. She became notorious in this role and is remembered by many survivors as wearing heavy boots and carrying a whip and a pistol. She was also remembered for her physical beauty and that's why the survivors dubbed her the Beautiful Beast, which was a name that perfectly described the depravity that she would later cause. Imra used her whip and pistol to punish inmates for the slightest violation of camp rules. She enjoyed lashing women across the chest with a whip so they developed infections in their breasts from the injuries caused by the braided wire at the end of the whip. An inmate doctor was left to operate on these women with an unsterilized knife and was forced to watch the women scream in agony. The inmate doctor recalled Imra's odd behavior during these operations and said, I happened to look up and encountered the most horrible sight I've ever seen, the memory of which will haunt me for the rest of my life. Imra Gresse was enjoying the sight of human suffering. Her wide opened eyes had the rigid, staring look of complete sexual satisfaction. She did this on multiple occasions so she could relive this sadistic moment repeatedly. She always came to watch the operations of these women whose breasts had been slashed open and had become infected with lice and dirt which infused the women's camp. Imra went as far to employ two huge wolf-like dogs as part of her brutal reign. Survivors recall her riding around camp on a bicycle with her wolf by her side accompanying the female inmates on their 16 km trek to work. If they couldn't keep up, she ordered her dog to attack them without mercy and in multiple accounts, inmates saw dogs eat prisoners alive while she watched. One inmate recalled an incident. The dogs were tearing at the girls' bodies. Imra came closer to observe what they were doing. Her eyes were bloodshot. The sight of blood seemed to intoxicate her. She panted and she was sexually excited and everybody could see that. Among Imra's other notorious deeds at Auschwitz-Birkenau was tying the legs together of a pregnant woman trying to give birth and watching her in agony. On one occasion, during the course of a selection of Birkenau arrivals, some attempted to escape and were noticed by Imra. She beat the majority with her hands and kicked them with her boots. Per various recollections of survivors, she is said to have killed at least 30 people per day. During her time at Auschwitz, Imra had various affairs with male and female inmates. After she grew bored with them, she sent them to be killed. Once, she made advances to a Georgian male inmate who refused, so what she done in return was torture the woman he loved by raping her, beating her unconscious and dragging her naked, lifeless body around the camp. She later shot the man and sent the woman to the camp brothel. Thankfully, Imra's reign at the camp finally came to an end in January 1945 as the Red Army advanced into Poland and neared Auschwitz. When the Death Factory, also known as Auschwitz-Birkenau, was abandoned, she found herself at Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. This was also the camp which Anne and Margaret Frank were dispatched to from Auschwitz-Birkenau in October 1944. Anne Frank died of typhus in 1945 and a few days after, her sister Margaret died. Imra was likely at the camp during Anne's final days. Imra's cruelty towards inmates got way worse in Belsen. They were often forced to stand for hours in snow, ice and rain from 3am to 9am. If someone did not stand up straight, she would beat the prisoner until unconscious. She also greatly increased the death counts by ordering selection parades, which were a random selection of prisoners to kill on that day. This is something she done regularly at her previous time at Birkenau concentration camp. She is also known to have knocked together the heads of two young sisters when she caught them trying to eat potato pill scraps by the camp kitchen. She actually set this trap herself in order to catch someone hungry enough to dare try and eat the potato pills. Around this time, the Nazi reign was finally crumbling and the British reached the camp on April 15th, 1945, uncovering the mass evidence 
of the unspeakable atrocities. Not wanting to leave her new SS lover, Imra remained at the camp and was arrested by the British. When the British arrived, they were also notified that cannibalism of dead prisoners had taken place. One prisoner at Belson for its last 10 days described how a prisoner took a knife and cut a portion out of a corpse's leg and then ate it. Other prison inmates told the British horrendous tales that kidneys, livers and hearts of corpses were being eaten by the starving prisoners. Imra and other guards were discovered at the Belson women's camp but were not immediately arrested like their male counterparts. Instead, they were assigned to bury 10,000 corpses lying around the camp. She was eventually arrested on April 17th and temporarily imprisoned at a nearby training camp. At this time, she was interviewed by an English journalist accompanied by a French survivor. When he asked her why she had committed the crime she had, she ashamedly replied, it was our duty to exterminate antisocial elements so that Germany's future would be assured. On June 16, 1945, Imre was indicted on murder and ill treatment of prisoners at Belsen and Auschwitz. In her defence statement, she claimed she was forced to join Ravensbrück by Karl Kabat while she was trying to become a nurse. A defiant Imre pleaded not guilty, but Imre was indeed found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging on December 13th. 1945. A chilling fact is, she sang Nazi songs the whole night before her execution and is reported to have shouted Schnell, meaning quick, right before the trap was opened on the gallows. The executioner did his duty and ended the life of possibly the worst murderer of the 20th century. At only 22 years of age, she was the youngest Nazi war criminal hanged and also the youngest person ever hanged by the British during the 20th century. After 20 minutes, the corpses were cut down and then buried in the adjacent courtyard of the Hamel prison. In 1954, Imre Gresse's body was reburied at a holy ground in Amwell, a cemetery near the prison. That wraps up today's story. I hope this one wasn't too scarring for you all. If you like these war related stories, please let me know in the comments down below and we could go back in history together and cover more war criminals. Subscribe to the channel because there's always something new to see here every single day. So hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.